Rob Lane here, millionaire maintenance man. Today we're going to talk about the project that I've recently done in Oklahoma City. Uh, this is my fifth house to remodel in this particular uh, close to downtown historical uh, neighborhood. And uh, we kind of went through the first process of uh, the first film to show where it was at uh, in the initial stages, uh, kind of what I planned on doing with the project. And now that we're kind of close to the final, you can see the projects. To uh, darken it up a little bit, we put shutters on it to add a lot of character. And a lot of the stuff in historical areas typically has to be approved. But once uh, they see it on there, they'll want to complain about it. And then we have to go and get a certificate of appropriateness. But it, it takes me to where I have to research uh, history on this house. And at one time, it did have shutters. Uh, we're also going to put in a, a vent. Uh, kind of to mimic the neighborhood uh, and get rid of that aluminum vent that you see up there. So uh, the house will, it, it just went from trees kind of covering and shrubs covering the entire front porch to really open it up and giving it some nice curve appeal. So uh, to help kind of push it a little further and to get more people interested in it whenever I list it, uh, you know, we'll put a red couch up there, put a couple of tables and chairs and kind of make it look as good as we can uh, and promising for the next potential tenant. Uh, if you want to come over here, if you remember what we originally did on the, uh, on the stockade fence, what we had was chain link fence following this line. We came from here and then we came back. We removed that stockade six foot tall fence, 40% to the back of the house is permitted in a historical neighborhood. Once again, I'm going to have to get a certificate of approval, but that's part of it. Uh, so anyway, I went with the color black as far as my stain. I use uh, stain with the weatherproofer in there too, so it's, got, it's a water resistant stain, which is a little bit more expensive, but you don't have to mess with it for a lot of years. And that's what I try to do on most of these houses, is uh, do it right the first time, that way we don't have to mess with it for a lot of years. Uh, unfortunately, paint and things like that, we can't necessarily do, uh, or you have no choice but to do, you know, every so often. But uh, Anyway, this is that. Uh, we are currently the coldest day in Oklahoma that we've had all year. And uh, so I'm ready to go inside and show you what we've done in there. Well, my competition typically does, they're, they're typically slumlords, is what I call it. Even a lot of my good friends are slumlords. I'm a high end renter, uh, all the amenities. Uh, I never turn over a home that I wouldn't live in personally myself. So, uh, some of the amenities that I'm talking about, such as um, this here. If you remember this original fireplace, what we did was um, you had the base, and I think that they had these kind of capped in some brown. We just basically painted it all white. Uh, I put the tile in and then uh, put the electric fireplace. These cost about 800 bucks. The ambulance of them, and whenever that tenant or potential customer walks through that door and they see that going, like, that's going to be a sell. You have a choice of either adding these or you can go with the original logs. I'm more traditional, it's more of a traditional house, even though it's got a lot of modern amenities. We try to keep it as traditional or to you know the era of the house as much as possible. Uh, hardwood floors completely redone. Of course, they're still really dirty. Uh, a lot of cleaning that we got to do on these. Uh, but I went with an ebony stain. The reason I go ebony on stain is due to the fact that I do allow pets in my houses. Uh, most people I know have pets. And uh, if they potty, if you have like a normal mahogany colored wood floor or a yellow color or just a lighter, Pet stains will show eventually. Uh, having it in the darker color definitely eliminates uh, a lot of that. I mean, dogs will still use the restroom on the floor. There's nothing we can do about that, uh, but it just won't show as much. Uh, this is the first time I went with a darker color uh, faux wood blind. Uh, if you want to look over here, I always uh, typically go white. But I like this because it picks up the ebony floor and it really pulls it together nicely. Uh, silly fan in the living room, uh, dark place turned down. Uh, all the other bedrooms I used to do the white lights down because I do use the ultra uh, pure white, the most whitest white that I could possibly find. Uh, dining room, once again, uh, 
light fixture, a lot of work. All this house had doors throughout. You had a door here, you had a door there, you had a door there. But what had happened was they'd have some uh, bad doors in the bedrooms uh, that they had replaced with newer models like the hollowed out door, six panel, that uh, are kind of uh, worthless. And so what we did was kind of filled in the areas where the brackets were to hang the doors and then pulled doors uh, from here and put it in the bedroom so they all match and are original to the house. Uh, I always put dimmer switches in in the uh, living room. It costs a little more money to, to go first class. You just can't stay as long. Let's go into the uh, butler's pantry. <laughs> Let's talk about a little bit of what we do with cabinets. And they still need a significant amount of work. But what I do is when you buy these 100 year old houses, typically these have been painted, you know, 10 times over that period, let's say even more than that. And you have caked up junk on these doors and all over here uh, that what I actually do is take them back, run them through a planer to get all that old paint off and then we actually spray them uh, to give it a nicer uh, clean look. So we kind of redid this, still got some touch up to do here. I had an original wood top here. Uh, since I had my granite guy come out and put the granite countertops in the kitchen, we went ahead and put granite countertops uh, on the uh, butler's pantry buffet in here. And then we kind of modernized it with a uh, different look on the handles. Uh, if you remember when we originally showed this, the cabinets came to about right here. What they would refer to as kind of a mobile home uh, type uh, cabinetry. So what we did was we took all the facing off that you see here, built it out another four inches. And the reason for that is because it didn't have a dishwasher and I wanted to put a dishwasher in it. I typically go stainless steel appliances on all my houses. And so we got the dishwasher uh, put in here and now it doesn't stick out four inches whether we'd have left it the other way. Put the granite countertop, undermount sink, stainless steel, and then just a single head uh, stainless steel faucet. Even if some of your professional carpenters build these cabinets for you, you're still going to have gaps. And then there's little tricks that we do uh, to uh, put on uh, tips. You know, there's a kind of a, a quarter of an inch gap there, and then we're able to cut wood off, piece it in, and make it look like one solid door. Uh, this door here is actually two different pieces that I've had to fix molding and different things like that to make it look like it shuts perfectly all the way. It's a very tedious, time consuming, but it's worth it. Um, and then I also wanted to create a lot more cabin space for the future tenant who lives here because they're obviously going to need it since we, we uh, you got such a small house. So um, all stainless steel appliances, uh, I always purchase those for the houses as well. Um, I usually buy in bulk and so I can get discounts and then if you go see the, the manager at your local hardware store and tell them you're going to buy, I think I bought these four appliances but then I had to buy a couple of dishwashers and something else, a stove for other properties that appliances go out. I put appliances in my properties uh, but once again we're kind of a room service rental and it's completely turnkey whenever a tenant moves into a house. Uh, they don't have to worry about nothing. I can provide the trash can for them. Uh, I am 6'4", I am a very tall person, uh, so some of these cabinets might be a little bit too high for your average person, so I'll also provide them a step ladder. It's a young lady, so she'll be able to get to her food. Um, these old, uh, what this was back in the day was an old ironing board, and this is what they did about 100 years ago, they had wooden ironing boards. And then what we do typically is just turn it into like a, a spice pantry. I always put the, the glass tile backsplash on both sides just because it adds a, a heck of a lot of curb appeal, uh, in my opinion, and really makes it uh, stand out. Uh, I prefer the glass. It's a lot harder to work with. It's a lot harder to, to cut with your uh, tile saw, but the end result is so much better. Um, always important to have your GFI plugs in your kitchens and your bathrooms. That's uh, code. And then we want to walk out here towards the back. With the garage here, uh, a lot of the detached two-car garages, uh, typically what happens is over time they end up leaving or leaning. We had to actually straighten that up, put a new roof on it, and manipulate it. Typically new garage doors don't fit these, so we're making garage doors that kind of open gate style instead of up and down. Uh, obviously too cold to uh, continue the stain process uh, all the way around. 
Uh, we got to wait for a couple of weeks for it to eat up. You're going to go into, uh, this is only a two bedroom, uh, one bathroom home. But it's a very large two bedroom, one bathroom home. Uh, you see the previous owner who I purchased this from had uh, put new windows in here and then two new windows in the dining room. The rest of them are at, throughout the house are ridiculously hideous. But we spent a lot of time fixing them, painting them, working on them. They're still kind of hideous, but being historical neighborhood, you can only go with an all wood uh, frame for your windows, uh, which means uh, triple the cost of a normal vinyl or aluminum window. So um, we're going to spend a little bit more money on the treatments of the windows. For instance, the blinds that I was showing you, the faux wood blinds. So I'll spend more money in that area and have to replace a whole window, which is ridiculously expensive. And then you still have to get a certificate approval on that as well. So now we move to the uh, the washer and dryer. I provide washer and dryers for all my houses as well. Um, you know, something you got to think about when you do have a rental property is we do have uh, break-ins. You do have stuff stolen off your front porch. Uh, this job alone, we've had roughly a thousand dollars worth of. Uh, uh, products and or tools stolen off just the front porch and that's even when you got a crew of four people working here. Uh, any close to downtown metropolitan area you're going to have to prepare for theft. It just it is what it is. Um, I don't know if I can only want to catch up. I'm thinking about getting a dog just to keep on a job site with me. Let's but, go to the bathroom. You see what we did in here? I try to keep as much as I can you know, we, 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 you got to make a profit. Profit is not a dirty word. You've got to make money off these things. So anything that you can use in the house to keep that looks good, then you want to do that. This right here in particular was with the house. I love this. So I kept it. It was actually a stained cabinet. We turned it white uh, to kind of match the uh, wainscoting and the floors. Actually added this old school tile in uh, for these houses, uh, typically built in the 20s. Um, this was the, the sort of tile that they did use. This is what I went back with. I went with a dark grout versus a light colored grout. The reason being is I also went dark grout in the shower. Tenants statistically don't keep their uh, showers as clean as I would at home. And so I go dark grout because eventually that white grout is going to turn yellow on you over time. Uh, not with this tenant, with the next one. So uh, the only thing uh, we've really got left to do in here is uh, paint. Turn it over. I'll add another little amenity, like you know, a towel rack here, uh, stainless steel that they can, you know, have shelves to put things on. Very big bathroom. You got a lot of wasted space here, but it is what it is. Uh, the second and other large bedroom. What we've done here is originally in the kitchen there were the hot water heater, which was gas. We had put, it was in the kitchen, stuck halfway out, and the, it looked terrible. We moved it to this hall closet, changed it from a gas water heater to electric. I typically do that in most of my homes because it's a hell of a lot more expensive to replace a gas line than it is to replace, or a gas water heater than replace a uh, element, an electric water heater, and or, you know, have to replace gas lines under the house. So it just makes it a lot easier and a lot less expensive to do that even though we are a natural gas state. Uh, but this is pretty much it. It's kind of the end of the project. Uh, we're getting very close. Excited to have it done. We've already got our next uh, house picked out to buy. Uh, basically, I buy all these off of lines of credit. Uh, so what I'll do is get this rented probably immediately. Uh, two bed, one bath house in a historical area close to downtown. I'm going to ask roughly $1,400 a month for this property, um, which should get it, and it should get it like that, because I got Oklahoma City University right next to me. Uh, I also live in this neighborhood. It is a very nice neighborhood, and I'm having a lot of success purchasing in my own neighborhood, and it keeps me within the radius of my house where all my tools are, and then the hardware stores are all around me. So it works out great. So that is my business model. That is my philosophy. I am Rob Lane, Millionaire Maintenance Man, signing off, and thanks for being with us today.